Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Thursday morning mountain weather update live camera from where our storm system is right now. This is Crystal Mountain Ski Area in Washington State, just out, outside of Mount Rainier up there. And it is snowing up there this morning. Uh, you can see the lens there caked with snow. There is your ridgeline cam with snow coming down at 6,800. There's your snow stake. You can see some new snow piled up right there. And at the top of chair six at about 7,000, you've got snow coming down. And I'm thinking the rain snow line with the storms at about 4,500 feet. So that means it's mainly snow for most of Crystal Mountain up there. Uh, and I've actually got a lot more snow in my forecast uh, for Crystal and the high uh, cascades, the volcanoes there in, in, in Washington State and even Oregon, all the way up into BC. So more yet to come. Let me show you radar. There's our storm system with that band of rain and snow moving through um, the West Coast, all the way down to Northern California and cruising through parts of Idaho up into BC. That's where the storm system is headed. It will have no effect and it will fizzle before it even reaches Utah, Wyoming, or Colorado. Now, there's another storm system or piece of energy that will rotate in behind this on its coattails. That one will go further to the south on 15 and the 16, and it will affect Nevada, Utah, and Wyoming, and a little bit of Colorado. So we'll look at that coming up. Let me give you the lay of the land here on the water vapor satellite imagery this morning. So your oranges and reds are your drier air loft, but the key is the, the whites and the blues, and that's your moisture aloft, and that's our area of low pressure. That's going to move up into this direction. Um, but behind it, again, an area of low pressure here and another area right there. This area of low pressure will likely come in behind this one and go further to the south, affecting the Sierra, Nevada, Utah, Wyoming, and it will kind of brush Colorado with some light accumulations. Now, down the road, there's also some southern track energy that will come up through New Mexico and Colorado and deliver some moderate uh, to maybe even heavy accumulations through northern New Mexico and extreme southern Colorado, but it still looks to be out of phase and it does not merge with the trough. At least that's the way it looks right now. We'll check all that out in the forecast. Let me show you my uh, best odds of snow, key dates, the timeline, Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, and Interior, BC. So for example, in the Tetons, and actually the Wasatch mirroring the forecast to a T with the Tetons. So afternoon, evening of 11.15 into 11.16, light to moderate snow accumulations, and again, 11.18 into 11.19. So that has yet to come. We'll dive into Alta here in just a second, Alta Snowbird. But um, for example, in Tahoe, 11.14, so today into tomorrow, light accumulations, and then some moderate accumulations, afternoon, evening, 11.17 into 11.18, and good snow ahead for interior BC. So that will continue. Okay, let me take you to Alta Utah, the forecast. This is the mediagram forecast for Alta at about 8,400 feet. So uh, this column is today, the 14th, that's tomorrow, the 15th, that's uh, Saturday the 16th. So down in the snow column, um, this particular model thinks that we're going to pick up snow, and I agree, afternoon, evening of the 15th into the morning of the 16th, thinking probably three or four inches of snow at Alta Snowbird, Solitude, Brighton, less accumulation, Park City, Deer Valley, Snow Basin. But you get the idea. So that's how it accumulates in time. And that front will pre be preceded by some strong wind gusts of about 50 miles an hour early and midday on Friday the 15th before that frontal passage. So that's how it plays out for a lot of Alta. Uh, and also Snowbird in Little Cottonwood Canyon. Okay, let me take you to this yesterday. Visible satellite image looking down on Colorado with clear skies, no clouds. All the white you see here is snow cover in Colorado. I love looking at these. And you can, so the mountains, no big surprise, covered in deep snow now. Really good snowpack for this time of the, the season. Um, one of the best that we've had this early on in, in several years. When you look down, though, on the eastern side of the state, the eastern plains around Denver, the Springs, down to Pueblo, and across the eastern plains, all that white, that snow cover, now, that's really something. That's from the last storm system, that southern track low that came up and laid down all that heavy snow. Pretty amazing to still see it there on the ground, a pretty big snow field. Um, we'll continue to melt that, though, today, and probably even early tomorrow. Um, let me show you what it looks like up for Loveland Ski Area on the Continental Divide. Um, one of my favorite resorts anywhere, and you've got a lot of dry air. This is our humidity forecast for the next 72 to 80 hours. Um, vertical slice of the atmosphere. You're looking at the timeline at the bottom. Read it from right to left. So it's all dry air. That's what the yellow and the oranges represent until we get to that front. On the afternoon, 
midday afternoon of the 16th into early on the 17th. <clears throat> and uh, you can see there's just a little bit. It's very small. And it's, it's pretty weak. There's not a lot of lift with this. I'm not expecting much accumulation. And, and you can see it totally fits with the snow forecast for Loveland Ski Area. Barely anything. Half an inch, maybe an inch, as this thing rolls through on the 16th into early on the 17th. So there you go. Not a whole lot out of this one for Colorado. Okay, let me show you the jet stream forecast by close of business today. There's our storm system hitting the Pacific Northwest, the dip in the jet over California as well. Then that moves into the interior. Now watch this. Now that's 1116. There's our storm system. And look at the southern end of this thing. There's a low there over the four corners. You see the little bit of a dip kind of cut off. That could become an area of low pressure that tracks up through northern New Mexico and southern Colorado. Now look behind it. There's another storm heading, uh, coming, coming into the Pacific Northwest. <clears throat> that then swings down into the interior and becomes another storm system, 1118, 1119. And on the tail end of that one, we could have an area of low pressure develop over New Mexico and Colorado. Still yet to be seen whether that's going to happen. But nonetheless, it is a possibility then that slowly moves away by 1122 and we're back to pretty much some high pressure ridging for the west coast okay looking at the uh the forecast radar and satellite so there we are by 5 30 this afternoon here we are friday morning look at the snow coming out of the sierra moving into the interior that then moves into uh, nevada utah idaho the tetons yellowstone big sky uh, with that shot of snow and then as it tries to enter Colorado there's going to be some very light accumulations on the 16th and the early 17th but that's it then it's all about what happens with the southern track low so here's Monday the 18th in the morning you can see the low coming out of New Mexico brushing the ski areas but it's totally out of phase if it was moving slower it would wait we'd get some merging with this next storm system and you can see it moving in Pacific Northwest all the way down through the Sierra that storm system then moves into the interior. Another low moves out. That brings snow back to Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and eventually into Colorado by the 19th and 20th. And does that develop into an area of low pressure? Of course, that's the question. Uh, you can see some wraparound snow for Denver, possibly. And then that moves away. And there's not a whole lot else um, across a lot of the West. Here's my latest snow forecast. So all of today through tomorrow, very light stuff for the lower 48. Maybe a few more inches up around Schweitzer, one to three for the Tetons, big sky, maybe one or two for the, the Wasatch. And then of course, we'll add snow to this on the early on the, on the 16th. So one inch is not all. Like I was showing you, it's probably about three inches total out of this front for the Wasatch, three or four inches. And then that moves on through. Here's the second time period. This is 1116 through 1123, so again, a little bit more snow for the Wasatch, and then another storm moves in with additional snow for all these locations. Um, and some snow, maybe three to six for the Sierra, one to two feet up there in the Pacific Northwest, uh, potentially six to 12 up there through interior BC, uh, Marmon Basin looking good, uh, probably five to eight across Big Sky and the Tetons, and in Colorado, um, it really depends on what happens with this southern track low. It does look like there's going to be some snow for northern New Mexico and southern Colorado, extreme southern Colorado, and you can see the potential there. Um, everybody else is pretty light unless you're on top of the continental divide with that storm system late in the period delivering most of what you see right there, most of it. That's late in the period. So there's a lot of little things because like I showed you, this initial front on the 16th and 17th in Loveland barely delivers an inch. So what you see on this map happens with the second storm system. And you can see it in my forecast, some 1119 to 1120 light, but some places could be heavier than that, depending on the track of those areas of low pressure. So that's how we get to these types of numbers here on the map. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here this morning. I always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.